At the beginning of the 16th century, Spanish settlers in America began the encomienda system, establishing for the first time colonial control over the indigenous people. The subsequent centuries are marked by our history textbooks with the series of conflicts between colonists and Native Americans that followed. These conflicts included the Pequot War, King Philip's War, the Pueblo Revolt, Queen Anne's War, the Tuscarora War, the Yamasei War, the French and Indian War, Pontiac's Rebellion, Lord Dunmore's War, the Seminole Wars, the Black Hawk War, the Ute Wars, the Modoc War, the Red River War, the Nez Perce War, the Dakota War, Sand Creek Massacre, and Wounded Knee Massacre, just to name a few. But in the midst of all this combat, there were a few who, with the advent of a new world at hand, were fighting not for control, but for peace. These individuals were, as historian Rebecca K. Jagger comments, actively engaged in mediating a cultural exchange and softening the impact of colliding worlds. And Sakakawea was one of them. Born around 1788 in the Western Rocky Mountains, the Shoshone woman would travel westward with the Lewis and Clark expedition of 1804 to 1806. She would, beside these famous explorers, traverse the continent and leave a mark on the future of the United States in more ways than one. In addition to the legacy left by the success of the expedition, to which she undoubtedly deserves to be greatly credited, Sacagawea would, as a cultural intermediary, facilitate a peaceful passage of ideas, words, and actions between the members of these colliding worlds. In doing so, Sacagawea would inspire the generations to come, influence positive diplomatic relations between colonial settlers and Native Americans, and serve as a beacon of light in a world consumed by the darkness of cultural conflict. Sacagawea was born sometime between 1786 and 1789 in what is today Lemmy County, Idaho, on the westward side of the Rocky Mountains. The daughter of a Shoshone chief, Sakagawea soon came to be a prominent interpreter, speaking both Shoshone and Hidatsa. Sometime between the ages of 10 and 12, Sakagawea was captured by Hidatsa Indians, an enemy of the Shoshone, and sold to French-Canadian fur trapper Toussaint Charbonneau, who made her one of his many wives. With Charbonneau, Sakagawea lived among the Hidatsa and Mandan Indians in the Upper Missouri River area, present-day North Dakota. In November of 1804, the Corps of Discovery, led by William Clark and Meriwether Lewis, that President Jefferson had sent to explore the Louisiana Purchase and beyond, entered the area and built Fort Mandan, where they elected to stay for the winter. With the end of the winter, the Corps once again embarked westward, this time accompanied by Toussaint Charbonneau and Sacagawea. Despite her young age at only about 15, and the fact that she was already about six months pregnant at the time, Sakagawea would prove to be an integral part of the expedition. Sakagawea is commonly believed to have influenced the expedition as an interpreter and guide for Lewis and Clark. While it is true that her knowledge of language and land were of great importance in the expedition, she also contributed a knowledge of edible plants and served as a cultural intermediary and symbol of peace. Throughout the journey, both Meriwether Lewis and William Clark kept detailed journals. In them, they frequently mentioned Sakagawea and her important role throughout the expedition. In regards to her interpretive skills, Commander Lewis wrote in his journal that it was Sakagawea through whom they could understand the natives. Sakagawea frequently served the role of interpreter and negotiator due to her knowledge of the spoken language, securing supplies such as horses for the Corps, and aiding in discussions between the explorers and natives. On the topic of her navigational abilities, Commander Clark later added that, the Indian woman has been of great service to me as a pilot through this country. On one occasion, one of the boats of the expedition capsized, and Lewis and Clark write of Sacagawea's help in rescuing cargo, important documents, and supplies from the river. They also write of her frequent help in charting a path across North America by teaching the Corps of gaps in the mountains and of high plains to travel across. Speaking of her scavenging role, Lewis wrote that she proved successful and she procured a good quantity of necessary plants. Her abilities to collect edible plants helped to sustain members of the crew 
throughout the journey. And perhaps most significantly, Clark wrote of her encouragement of positive relations, stating that she reconciles all the Indians. As to our friendly intentions, a woman with a party of men is a token of peace. Sakagawea used her position as a woman to fulfill a vital component of Indian diplomatic strategy, facilitating peaceful relations between the opposing groups. As both a woman and a Shoshone, Sakagawea served as a symbol of peace between the explorers and natives. Her presence allowed for conflict to be avoided on a regular basis. One of the more well-known examples of this is when the Corps met a group of Shoshone Indians and soon discovered that the leader was actually Sakagawea's brother, Kamawait. This relation allowed the Corps to buy horses and safely pass through the Rocky Mountains. Through her skills in interpretation, navigation, collection, and mediation, Sakagawea greatly influenced the success of the Lewis and Clark expedition. The true pronunciation, meaning, and spelling of Sakagawea's name has long been a point of controversy among modern-day historians. Known as Sakakawea, meaning bird woman, by the Hidatsa, and as Sakajuia, meaning boat launcher, by the Shoshone, we commonly refer to her today as Sakagawea. Her name is not the only point of controversy surrounding her legacy. Sakagawea's life and impact are frequently crowded by confusion about her death because, over the years, her name has come to encompass the legacies of many Native American women in the 1800s. However, by weeding out fact from fiction and looking at documentation and journals, historians have come to agree that the real Sakagawea died around 1812 at Fort Manuel in what is now Kennel, South Dakota, several years after successfully accompanying Lewis and Clark on the expedition. After her death, Sakagawea would live on, not just through her two children, who Clark took custody of, but through her inspiring legacy. In the centuries to come, Sakagawea served as a prominent feminist figure for both the women's rights movement and the women's suffrage movement. This woman, who trekked across North America with a newborn baby, who cast one of the first votes by any woman on the continent on the matter of where to build a fort on the western seaboard, and who stood tall in the face of adversity, was, and still is, a symbol of women's independence and importance. But her impact on the United States goes beyond women. It goes to the very center of equality. And it goes beyond exploration to the core of cross-cultural communication and understanding. Sakagawea was a strong woman, a determined Native American, and a skilled explorer. But she was also a cultural intermediary. The mutual opportunities and trusted relationships she created, as well as the peaceful precedent for interaction she set in a world consumed by cross-cultural conflict, greatly impacted the future of the United States and American Native relations, and inspired the generations to come. And that is a true mark of greatness.